Um, I could easily see NFTs being a trillion dollar asset class. Uh, and I, so I think it's just, it becomes a question of what are the best chances of being able to ride that growth? Alex, uh, like, let's get started. Like, you know, people will join whenever they want to. Um, like, you know, how did you get into crypto? What is your, like, you know, journey as you begin? Yeah. Um, yeah, I got into Ethereum and, um, like, Web3 around 2017. And uh, I started liking it right away. I, I had heard about Bitcoin a lot before that. Um, I actually had a, a, a college roommate back in like 2014 or 2015 that was like pretty into mining Bitcoin. Um, we had like a, a milk crate in our apartment that like heated the whole apartment because it was like full of all these graphics cards. Um, so, yeah, like I'd known about Bitcoin before, but it just it never really clicked for me. Um, and then when I found out about Ethereum and like, of course, the whole ICO boom, in 2017 that was exciting um and then kind of took 2018 off because that was pretty depressing <laughs> so i getting back into it um and I, I was doing my computer science degree at the time so um i finished up my computer science degree uh summer of 2020 so like right around like DeFi summer was taken off um which was pretty good timing i got a, a job as a, a programmer um with um Kerman at like ArcX, um, which was a nice intro into the space. It didn't end super well, but all good. And um, then a lot of people like reached out to me afterwards and it seemed like it was a good time for me to just try and like launch some sort of project. Um, so I had this idea for like creating a, a punk token, which was backed by actual crypto punks. And as I started working on it, I realized that this could be expanded and generalized to all sorts of NFTs. Um, and that, you know, eventually if you had all these NFT tokens, these ERC-20 NFT tokens, people could turn them into like combined index funds. Um, so that was the NFTX idea. And yeah, it's, it's changed a lot since then. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's how I got into the space and, and started programming and everything. Awesome. And uh, it's been almost uh, a year or a little more over a year since like you know, NFTX, uh, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> how, how do you feel about that? Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, it feels like it's been a lot longer. And um, like NFTX, I think I, I just, it launched at a, like a really fortunate time when people were getting really interested in NFTs and like DeFi was still taking off. Um, and I just, I like originally my goal was when I launched the project that like the token price would get up to like between like three to $5. Um, and like, I figured that way um, I, I set aside 10% for myself over five years. Um, so I figured like if it got up to like $5, I could basically like just not have to get a job for the next five years and I could just work on NFTX. And so it just, it really exceeded my expectations. Um, and then all these people like joined the team um, and we started getting like volunteers um, that were helping out in the community. And now a lot of those volunteers have basically like a, a year ago, they quit their jobs um, and they started working full time for NFTX and getting paid from uh, our DAO treasury. Um, so yeah, I've just been really fortunate um, and also just fortunate with how the community raise was structured because we like took in um, Ether and CryptoPunks and some other NFTs too, like CryptoKitties that haven't done so well, but like Autoglyphs. Um, and so like originally, like we raised, I think around like six or $7 million. Uh, and then now that treasury is worth like, I think closer to like 35 or 40 million. Um, so it's, it's a really nice solid Dow treasury. Um, that will keep us funded for a long time. And yeah, um, it's just, it's been a wild ride. And last year was, it was pretty crazy just in general. Um, and it, it's kind of nice that like personally it, it's cooled down and it's just like day-to-day -day work now. Um, and not so much like Twitter shit posting and, <laughs> and getting in Twitter feuds and that sort of stuff. Um, 
but yeah, you, you learn along the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, just uh, want to give a shout out to Caps. Uh, like you know who oh, yeah. who's who's uh, Salish stream just got renewed. So tell us a little bit about that as well, right? Like and how how does that uh, feel, right? Like you you just renewed uh, uh, like a fun. Oh show. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, those guys. It's been like officially a, a year since Caps, Quag, uh, Javery, and JB um, joined as like our product team, uh, and yeah, they basically took like the front end of the app and um, totally redesigned it because um, my original version was pretty pretty lacking. <laughs> it's just like numbers on a page, like token IDs. Um, so yeah, it's crazy how far the the web app has come. And um, it's it's really all thanks to them, and it's like I just I never could have done that on my own. Um, the NFTs are tough that way, you know. It, it's not like um, a lot of DeFi protocols where it's it's very simple. Um, there's just there's so much going on in the front end, and like caching images and metadata, and um, just a lot of like graph subgraph stuff. And it's it, I really have nothing to do with any of that. Um, and Caps is like the product manager, so he basically, that's like his baby, um, and it's <laughs> it's uh, it's turning out pretty good so far, and it's it's constantly improving. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where it is in like a year's time. That's awesome. That's awesome. So thank you for sharing that journey. So Alex, yeah. tell me, uh, tell me uh, why why uh, what's your bullish case for NFTs? Why? Do you like NFTs and like you know what was your reason that like you know you were like hey let me do something in NFTs because see let's be honest right like whenever you like when you started uh, NFT X NFTs were popular but they were not as popular as we see them now yeah right? yeah so wh- yeah, why like did when you... I started when I started buying CryptoPunks I, I was later than some people you know a lot of people got it in like 2017. Uh, but yeah, I, um, when I started buying them like summer 2020, um, I think I brought, bought my first one for like around one ETH. Um, and I just, I, I've always liked collectibles. Like as a kid, I thought Pokemon cards were really cool. Um, and then I was into this project loom network for a long time and they were doing like crypto zombies and NFT stuff. And that was actually one of the things I thought was really cool about Ethereum is that you could have these. Um, digital collectibles that could be like programmable and like even use them in games. Um, So I I started just getting into CryptoPunks and I I spent like every night I'd spend more time like just browsing through them. Um, And I I started realizing like, oh, the more CryptoPunks I buy, (laughs) the more the price goes up. (laughs) Um, And then I ended up with all these CryptoPunks and I was like, wow, the problem is now if I try to sell them, like the price will go down. Um, and I was like, if only there was like more liquidity, especially on the floor, which was kind of part of the, the reason, um, for me wanting to make NFTX. But yeah, I think NFTs just speak to people on, a, a more human level. Like there, there's all sorts of utility, uh, for blockchains and, uh, web three and DeFi. Uh, but like, if you look at crypto as a space, like a lot, a lot of the trading is just, it's really just kind of gambling um and its communities um like like a token like dogecoin right like um it's about people just wanting to you know ride the hype make money talk to other dogecoin holders um and nfts just take that to the next level because they're visual um and they're they're like better to be used as like a digital identity um and it's just more fun trading them um and you know, I never, never thought like NFTs would take off this hard. Um, I remember early last year, like I put out a, a tweet, like I think CryptoPunks were around like five ETH floor in January last year. And I put out a tweet like, will they break 10 ETH this year? And the results were like 50-50. And even I was like, oh, it seems like a long shot, like 10 ETH, you know. Um, but it, it's just crazy. Um, but when you look at it in the scheme of things, like, I think the entire gross market cap for all NFTs is around like 15 billion or so, um, which is, it's just a very small market cap overall. Um, Like it's smaller than like XRP and Cardano. So 
Uh, on one hand, like NFTs have boomed so hard over the last year and a half, but on the other hand, it feels like there's still so much more. Um, like they can just become such a bigger asset class. Um, I like I could easily see NFTs being like a trillion dollar asset class in the coming years, um, and so like that would be like a hundred x gain, right? Um, it's just I think the question is like that people are always wondering is like, okay, how, how much will this um, kind of diffuse between uh, like into new NFTs or like how much will like the blue chips capture? Like if NFTs as a whole go up a hundred X, like the gross market cap, does that mean crypto punks go up a hundred X or 10 X or like, like who knows. Right. Um, so there's still a lot of uncertainty, but yeah, it's just, it's crazy how far they've come. And like people that I, even like my sister and friends, um, they seem more interested in like getting MetaMask just so they can trade NFTs, uh, which I think is, is pretty promising for the whole space. This podcast was possible because of our sponsors, Brave and Unstoppable Domains. More about them next. Crypto scams are like box of chocolates. You never know which one you're going to get. Especially if you're using a crypto wallet, which is a browser extension, you run the risk of attacks like phishing scams, account spoofing, data leaks, and theft. The best way to avoid getting attacked is using Brave Wallet. Brave Wallet is the first secure crypto wallet built directly into a browser, so no extensions required. With Brave Wallet, you can buy, store, send, and swap assets. You can even manage your portfolio and NFTs all in one place. Whether you're new to crypto or a seasoned pro, it's time to switch to Brave Wallet. Download Brave at brave.com slash web3 with the and click the wallet icon to get started. You know what's the worst part about crypto? These long and complex wallet addresses. They can get so confusing. I know, you hate them too. What if I told you I replaced my long wallet address with dhirajshah.nft? Yeah, that's my name. All thanks to Unstoppable Domains, they're the number one providers of NFT domains. With Unstoppable Domains, you don't have to worry about renewal fees because you get to keep your NFT domain forever. You can get an NFT domain as well, maybe a .crypto, .nft, .x or something else. Go to unstoppabledomains.com right now and get your NFTs for as low as $5. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I just pinned a tweet which uh, where you were saying like, you know, uh, if <laughs> like, you know, punks are a slam dunk, major slam dunk, one market's better <laughs> Uh, and you can invest via Uniswap. I'm hoping like, you know, you can break 10 each. Yeah. Just punk. I think that's the initial idea of like you know NFTX also forming. So mm-hmm. like just put it up. Yeah, um, liquidity is still a, a big um, kind of lacking component in the NFT space, and um, I think that's partly just to do with the fact that it takes time for people to start kind of appreciating the importance of liquidity, um, and how like. It's nice when things are going up in price, but when the market starts going down, if you don't have liquidity there, it just, it can go to zero very quickly. Um, and and like now with the amount of money that some NFT projects are raising, um, it just seems like it's it would be nice if it became the standard, if some of those, those minting proceeds, like if a project raises over a thousand ETH, <laughs> And minting proceeds, it'd be great if, like, you know, 100 ETH or so just went to liquidity, um, which has kind of been the norm for DeFi projects for a while now. So, yeah, I, I think you know that's still to come, and I increasingly think that the bull case for NFTX is that projects and communities take advantage of it, um, similar to how like projects take advantage of Sushi Swap. Like, I think the NFTX DAO provides over 95% of the liquidity for the NFTX token. Um, so, and, you know, with projects like Florida, I don't know if we'll get into that, but like there's uh, there's a lot of money to be made uh, for liquidity providers. And it, it's kind of like a flywheel as there's more liquidity, then there's more trading and then there's more trading fees and then there's more liquidity providers. So it feeds into itself. 
Very cool. So I just want to point out an incident, and I just want to hear from, like, you know, your perspective. Uh, we saw mm-hmm. it uh, happening, and I I found it very interesting. I'm just setting context for people. Uh, when there was the ape uh airdrop announced. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, like, just to give you context, NFTX has like pools of board apes, right? Like you can go and buy. Mm-hmm. from there and like what happened is someone did a flash loan if i'm not wrong and yeah yeah, yeah. so i'm just i'm just uh, explaining yeah. it, uh, to people and then like you know you can tell from your perspective like you know what happened For sure. like if i get it right or not someone took a flash loan that means they uh, took a lot of eat they bought a, uh, all the board apes from nftx uh, in one single transaction they bought it they uh, claimed all the ape tokens uh, which like you know you could redeem against the board ape and they listed it back to nftx and uh, they did it in one transaction they kept all the ape tokens and like you know the board apes were returned so <laughs> this was mm-hmm. interesting so goss w- w- what did you guys think about this Yeah, um I mean, we kind of expected it. Um like I put out a tweet the day before, um if people want to claim that ape token for themselves, they should redeem um their board apes and their mutants. Um it's it's a very difficult problem to solve with these airdrops because vaults like you said, they're basically pools of NFTs. Um and anyone can take them and you can take it out and then you can put it back in. And Kiwi our developer, he wrote in um a feature for the vault tokens which is like a flash loan or it's actually a flash mint um because you're not actually borrowing it but the, it's called a flash loan um and it allows you to mint as many vault tokens as you want for a single transaction um and then you can basically redeem the whole vault and as long as all everything goes back by the end of your transaction it's all fine um and like we we put this in there like back like a year ago was the idea um because after the mebits drop we realized like wow um cuz basically a similar thing happened like people went and they cycled through the punk vault um and you can do it without the flash loan by just having one item and just cycling uh but it's a, it's a bit easier with the flash loan built in and um yeah it's a lot of people thought it was kind of like an exploit and it it kind of was just because the ape coin was worth so much Uh, but the vault actually earns a lot of fees from all that. So like I think Kiwi he forgot to pull out his board ape. Um he was providing liquidity, but he he earned almost a full board ape um that day from um just what? from all the fees. Yeah, so like so what happens is like each time you pull the an item out it's 5% and then putting it back in is 5%. And then I think it's like 5 to 10% for the flash loan too. Um so and there were close to like 10 items in there. Um so yeah, he basically earned like almost as much as he would have gotten for the from the drop anyways. Um so it's it's pretty cool because like as there's this turnover, then all the stakers earn value. Um it's just that it's a question of like how much the actual item being dropped is worth. Um so if ape coin had been worth like you know only 20% what it was um like stakers they probably would have made just as much uh and like I think it would be great if we could add in some ways to make the fees go up when there's more demand uh so like one idea is that like we would let people bid on it ahead of time so it's like okay you know this is, the drop is about to come in 10 minutes um you request you request the right to flash loan and to cycle through the vault and if anyone else wants to fight you for that and they have to bid the fee up um and then the fees would actually be even higher than what they were but yeah as it is it's so it's kind of funny like on one hand um the people that forgot to take it out they kind of got wrecked because the ape coin ended up being worth more uh but in a weird way it could be seen sort of like a feature uh and i think it's it's nice if like especially for nfts that gets lots of random drops um people that are staking you know you don't even have to keep up to date with anything you can just stake and it'll just earn fees and then you can come back and check like 6 months later and it's like oh you know i took all that time off uh but it still earned fees because people cycled through the vault and claimed these assets so yeah it's it's an interesting quirk to the system hey that that's super cool and i i really did not know that like you know uh 
like you could earn so much in fees right like even yeah. like hey so like just because uh, we we are saying that like uh the what do you say the value of a coin was high that's why this happened mm-hmm. but someone would have done it even otherwise right because speculation because they're not losing as much but like if the liquidity providers can like gain out of it that's pretty cool right like this <laughs> yeah another board him that's that's just <laughs> like amazing right like so yeah it, it is pretty yeah he checked the other day he was like whoa what the fuck <laughs> i got so much like uh so yeah it's uh the board ape vault has has a bit of issues because all the apes in it are stolen i think or at least most of them <laughs> so yeah that's it's it's really weird how that has only happened to the board ape vault and the mutant ape vault and like none of our other, other vaults have that issue but um <laughs> um yeah there's not not much we can do about that just because like we're permissionless and yeah and whatnot but yeah I'll, that's a, that's a whole nother issue yes I'm sending the feds your way. Just kidding, just kidding. Hey, uh, I mean, talk- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking about memes. Uh, I mean, see, I'm asking you this question because, like, you know, you are a person who will take it properly. But like, do you remember when there was just like the entire DeFi bear market, which has happened ha- had happened last year, or like even yeah. NFT market, NFTX token, <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> down was ninety five percent, right? Like so, from the top, yeah, it was of... down, down a lot. <laughs> it's it's uh, still down it, a lot, but like not that it, bad, yeah. Because uh, even it, a lot of us lost money, and I think even your dad bought the top or like some... yeah, he he want yeah, and he was gonna <laughs> sell it like five hundred dollars, and it went up to four hundred and ninety nine, and then all the way back down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm... you're quite uh, like you know casual about it so there was a big drawdown and i think this is the case because there was a people sale which like you know just flooded yeah. the market and a lot of people bought nftx just thinking like you know mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's a index uh, of like you know the nft market but like you know people just aped in <laughs> but like what yeah happened? it was really the only nft defi token to invest in so i Like it just went so much higher than I thought. Ah, uh, yeah. And and your five five dollar gold turned into a five hundred dollar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's it's funny how that how that happens because like when I launched the project, I didn't tell any friends or family to invest because um, I wasn't that sure of myself. <laughs> Uh, but then, as the price went higher and higher, at like three, four hundred dollars, I'm like, you guys should probably invest, yeah. uh, which was stupid of me because, yeah, it's it's easy to get caught up in it, and of course, you know, eventually it comes back down to reality. Uh, but yeah, I think I think we're at a pretty healthy valuation these days. Uh, I tr- I don't check price nearly as much as I used to. Yeah. yeah. but but you know what what has happened over last few months uh, because i i okay uh, disclosure i hold nftx tokens uh just <clears throat> I I check sometimes right like so the, there is a very nice steady growth and like you know uh the coin has been like you know just people who like the project are buying it right like earlier there were like <clears throat> a lot of speculators who did not understand what the hell all of this is but like you know the community has grown uh over a period of time and it's it's very wholesome right like all of you guys mm-hmm. do like a lot of nerdy cool stuff and like you know people really like it and talking about that like you know you guys also started floor down uh can you <laughs> tell yeah. us uh what, what that is yeah well i mean to be honest i didn't have a ton to like it was it was really cool because we have like a core team of 10 people now um 10 guys and like they basically just went off and built this awesome project floor down which was uh is the brainchild of caps um and it's based on olympus dao uh, but basically instead of accumulating stable coins it uses the bonding mechanism to um accumulate um nftx vault tokens and nftx lp pairs um so like the punk token and then also the punk west token um uh, and and now like wizards as well and like there's a whole community that's growing there and like they vote on like which collections to add next um So yeah that's like that's really cool um and I just the, like the team is so strong now and it it was just really awesome watching them just over the last couple months uh build up this whole front end for it and fork the protocol and I helped with the solidity a little bit uh but 
yeah, kudos really goes to the rest of the team for coming up with it all. Um, and it's, it's um, like the reason that Caps came up with it uh, was basically as a way to kind of bootstrap more liquidity for NFTX. Um, so it's, it's really good for NFTX as well. Um, and it's kind of like this reciprocal relationship where Flordow earns returns on the liquidity and then the liquidity gets deeper for NFTX vaults. Um, and it gets like this flywheel going. So, um, yeah, I think like the day after they launched, they, they swept the punk floor and like, they put in like, it's like $10 million or more of like punk liquidity, um, which is just, it's really cool to see. And like now NFTX are, our vaults, like I'm looking at it right now, like the total value, um, the TVL of NFTX is like 50 mil, um, which is a lot of NFTs, like $50 million worth in our vaults. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really cool to see. And it's, it's definitely been weird, like as as certain periods, like when price is going down so much, um, but yet we keep on shipping like new features and the web app keeps getting better and our metrics keep going up. Um, so I think that's just like part of, uh, being on a DeFi team, you learn to kind of like block out the noise, um, and it's nice that we can laugh about it. Like when, <laughs> when we're like, like Larry is posting charts of like which protocols are down the most. And like NFTX is like three times in a row. <laughs> it's down the most in the entire space. Um, but yeah, like all of our core metrics are really good, right? So um, like, and we just keep on building and just keep on shipping. And um, yeah, it's, it's cool to see the ecosystem now expanding as well with FloorDAO. Um, and we have some other ideas as well. And, you know, so hopefully a year from now, there'll be even more projects. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to find uh, like a tweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, Very. I'm just, uh, just, just to give you context, people who are listening, uh, uh, this is what uh, Florida did. Like they bought punks worth of five point. 1, 6 million, right? Like, so whenever you see all these big NFTs being bought, it's probably, I earlier it used to be Goss, <laughs> personally, yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. sweeping all the floors. Now we also see floor now, like, you know, sweeping blue chips. So uh, Goss, I have a question, uh, like, you know, a little bit alpha for the users. Like if we follow what happens uh, in in the uh, like you know your snapshots or um, what do you say like in in your forum discussions? Can we mm-hmm. find out like you know what flaws are you sweeping next and uh, front run you? Yeah, I, I think you could definitely um, like and I would definitely recommend going to like the floor Dow Discord um, because it's like they have quite open discussion over which floors to sweep next, and there's definitely alpha there, right? Uh, like if there's going to be a big sweep or if they're going to, if they're going to release a bond for another collection, which is basically like incentivizes people to sweep and bond. And like, it's just for people that want to get, that are interested in NFTs and DeFi, it's a really cool community uh, because it's still pretty small and everyone's really passionate. And basically the whole focus is on appraisal um, and like appraising, like which collections um, they should get added next. And, I was in there the other day and I was looking at some of the, like the appraisal frameworks that some of the users uh, were putting forward. And like um, there was one that was like called like FUD and it was like three points. I think it was like fungibility, uh, utility and durability. Um, so like, you know, how anti-fragile a collection is. Uh, and they're like basically trying to decide like which collections are the best, best ones to add into the bonds. Uh, and the wizards, you know, kind of checked a lot of the right boxes. Um, And, you know, there's more money being made in NFTX a lot of the time for collections that aren't too expensive, um, just because they have more turnover. Um, So like collections that are worth like less than 10 ETH tend to, you know, have more turnover than collections that are worth more than 10 ETH. Uh, But it's also good to be worth more than like at least one ETH. Otherwise, the gas costs end up, it ends up costing a lot in gas just to buy an NFT. So wizards were kind of around like the perfect point. Um, and there's more utility. And so, yeah, like I, I kind of missed the opportunity to sweep the wizard floor before, but I'm sure that I'm sure that there's definitely some alpha there for people that are, are looking to get in right, right ahead. And like the, the real smart thing to do would be to sweep the floor 
um, ahead of time and then to use those assets to add liquidity and bond it to Florida out. Um, and then you get your, um, your rebasing rewards as well. So it's, it's a pretty cool system and, and a great community. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Goss, you know, you, I mean, earlier you used to shitpost a lot and uh, <laughs> yeah. you also used to like, create all these high value NFTs. Uh, now we don't see you doing that. I think like you've just taken a small break, but like, I just want to talk about, uh, uh, I'm not sure if you have like spoken like on a podcast or something about like, you know, you, what's your highest sale uh, you have done of your NFT? Yeah. So I've made like, I'm despite being really smart about getting into NFTs early, I made some horrible trading decisions last year. Um, so like, I think the highest I've ever sold an NFT, I sold a, a pretty dope punk zombie last summer uh, for like 550 ETH. But it was like literally like a month before zombies took off and like broke a thousand ETH. So yeah, that was- You started smart. the bull market. Right? Yeah, I guess that's what people tell me, right? But like, yeah, who knows? Um, and yeah, mostly I, I've always liked floors a lot. Um, I think- like a year ago, I, I swept the ape, the board eight floor at like 0.5 and I had like 40 and then I sold like 39 of them at like 1.5. So it's <laughs> kind of painful to think about too. Uh, really, I, I think it, I would have done a lot better last year had I spent less time on Twitter and just less time trading. But um it's it's tough it's crazy like when you know your portfolio is going up and like the whole market's taking off and like you think you're a genius because you were early and you got like all this dopamine in your brain uh, so you're like oh, i'm gonna do it again i'm gonna do it again um and eventually like yeah at this point i think like the people that did really well were the people that just bought and held um like just you know they buy and they hold but then again everyone has their own strategies um some people are good at flipping like chop on our team, like he loves to flip. Um, and it's like, he gets in early. He, you know, he gets in at the mint. Um, if it goes up, he takes his profits pretty quick and he moves on to his next, the next collection. So it really depends on what your edge is. Um, and yeah, Twitter, Twitter can be, um, it can be a bit of a mind fuck. Um, so I try, I'm, I don't follow, I unfollowed everyone like a month ago. I was just, I just found I was getting sucked into too much drama on my home feed. Um, but I don't like getting rid of my account entirely because it, it is still nice for people to DM me and to be able to tag me and just for me to post the occasional, occasional tweet, uh, like funny thing or like positive thing about NFTX. So yeah, right now I'm just, I'm just not following anyone and, but I'm, I'm still kind of creeping from the back and uh, it seems to be a healthier balance. Awesome. Awesome. And I just want to like, you know, give shout out to you because Goss has also been like, you know, one of the early supporters of Cool Club. Um, yeah. So like, that's, that's pretty awesome. Thank you for uh, doing that. And like, you know, help me uh, like, you know, just quit my job <laughs> and uh, like do these educational Twitter spaces uh, full time. And like, you know, yeah, man. Oh, and, it's um it's crazy like seeing how far you've come it's it's really cool seeing people like yourself who just at first were just kind of nft enthusiasts like i remember like back in the day just like one of my followers that were trying to just like yeah uh, comment on my tweets and then you like end up building your own platform it's like fifteen thousand followers now yeah i didn't know you quit your job but congrats man <laughs> um it's really cool it's, it's crazy like looking back to the cool cats launch um and it's like how many people kind of got in early for that and yeah that was like it's it seemed like the big moment for a, a lot of people like yourself yep. um yep. yeah like i yeah it's i wish i swept cool. I, 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 <laughs> biggest flip uh from like a 64 dollar cool cat to like a 40 dollar oh sorry <laughs> no for 40 000 <laughs> flip or a yeah man flip. that's crazy Good. Yeah, I was quite happy. And uh, it was a floor one, right? Like, so I still sold above floor. Uh, so I, I sold the top, uh, local top at least. So <laughs> that was... Yeah, no, I timed it perfectly. 
yeah but uh, yeah i mean thank you for like you know supporting and like you know we've always spoken so much about like you know mm-hmm. nfts and like you've helped a lot so like you know you've been a amazing like a big part of the journey um oh my pleasure bro yeah i, I enjoy your content <laughs> yep 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 and uh, like i used to follow goss just like because the amount he used to shit post and <laughs> and honestly like, you know uh it was not post right like he he would just say what he felt like and uh, it might not be the most popular opinion on twitter so, <laughs> so yeah i would just whatever popped into my head it would just immediately go to twitter yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. be cool uh, so uh, also uh, goss like w- w- what's w- what's the uh, you were talking about like you know how nfts the liquidity can go away very quickly so can you tell us some projects which were like a big f like you know you bought them and now there is like literally no liquidity and like you know you're stuck with the bag are there any kind of projects like that yeah i'm sh- oh man i'm sure there are I'm trying to think like i mean of course like going back like a year like hash masks was an example like everyone thought hash masks was just going to blow up um let me go on to my um open to really quick it's you know I, i try and block these things out <laughs> uh, but like like i haven't even checked a lot of them lately but like like i swept the floor for like peaceful groupies um i don't know how they're doing these days um uh, oh yeah they're down a lot um and it's just there's a lot of luck involved i think right the dudes um and like it 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 was weird because like i'd sweep these floors and people would start tweeting like oh god is sweeping the floor and like the price would go up right um but unless you could take profits it's it's no good um and i normally wouldn't take profits um and if there was more liquidity it'd be easier to take profits but like i always, I always felt bad like after everyone was so stoked like i i swept a floor that if i went and took profits it would like crash the price um I have, I have a lot of Ulu Crew is by far my biggest um holdings. Um and fortunately they're up a lot from where I bought. I bought like pretty low. Um and that's that's a really cool collection. Um uh, cuz Kiwi was behind it who's like our our main solidity developer. Um so yeah, I'm still hoping that those will get me back to like giga rich one day, but who knows. Um they're they're just really fun, I think. Uh you, you're talking my... about Ulu Crew? Are you talking yeah. about Ulu Crew, yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorite female uh, profile picture collection. Yeah, awesome. And like, uh, were there any uh, like big wins? Like, you know, you sold like at a good time, uh, or like, you know, you were like, oh shit, I, I got lucky with this one. Any such uh, moments? Yeah, not definitely more uh, mistakes <laughs> than big wins, but um, <laughs> like, I did, I did do pretty lucky. Like, on one of my cool cats, I think I got like an exotic two. um like one of the yellow ones and like i i bought it for like 2.5 e like um like a week after the mint and then i ended up selling it for like 55 e or so so there's definitely been like some some pretty awesome wins um and i got really big into rare pepes and um i've done pretty well on those i think uh but yeah you know it's it's tough i think for people that got an early like at one point i had like 60 crypto punks 25 autoglyphs um like a, over a year ago um and if i just held on to all that like i i would be like so rich right um but it's just when things go up like 100 extra more um i i don't i know people like really hate when people sell and take profits and like even like when i was selling my punks like a lot of people kind of get upset um but i i don't know i think it's it's kind of just the rational thing to do um cuz you never expect yeah. things to go up so much right yeah. um and and for me it's it's best i think just to focus on nftx um and like as long as nftx does well then i'm, I'm pretty happy and like i don't need the coolest profile picture around even though that's that's fun to have <laughs> <laughs> yeah i that's that's nice oh i think uh, uh i think uh, like uh I think uh, our first conversation not not necessarily our first conversation but like i did tell you like you know hey these cool cats have these squirtles called uh, <laughs> trade yeah the squirtle squirtle squad yeah, glasses yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you still got one of the squad yeah. glasses. That's I got so, them. I got yeah. them. I was like a squirrel veil, but then I think I sold them too early. <laughs> yeah, man. Me too. Yeah. That's like, funny. I have gotten yeah. like eight, nine of these. But uh, sadly, I picked the worst trade uh, I could have because, like, this is just a two, three eat from the floor premium, where, like, you know, you could just buy any froggy or, like, you know, whatever. But anyway, uh, okay. So, what is your current investment philosophy? Like, you know, what what the projects are you minting or buying or? Re-buying? Yeah. So yeah, to be honest, I don't like mint and jump into many collections these days um and partly just because I'm, I'm trying to focus on nftx um and like i used to trade DeFi a lot more before nftx but in terms of like an investment thesis and like what i, I would I tell like friends and family um of course i think ethereum is i'm, I'm like a huge eth bull like eth maxi i think there's um, a decent chance like it hits like 100 grand one day um and like there's still so much more to go but for nfts uh, i think like the the biggest alpha is just how small the gross market cap is um and it's like like i was saying like it's only like 15 billion or so uh, it might be getting closer to 20 billion but like that's still super small and so i think it's just it becomes a question of how do you what are the best chances of being able to ride that growth so if like nfts go from being like a 15 billion dollar asset class to like uh, a 1500 billion dollar asset class like which nft collections um have the highest probability of going up with the, the group um and like i think it's really tough to know which ones um like it's there's just a lot of luck and randomness and chaos involved uh but like if you spread money around the blue chips and you just hold um and especially stuff that's probably a bit older um like crypto punks autoglyphs i would say at this point like board apes you know they're not going away um and if you just kind of diversify among the blue chips um and I, I don't like promoting like NFTX too much um, as as an investment, but I do think that like certain NFT DeFi projects, um, there's a good chance that they all go up with the the entire space as well. Um, so like you know, find some good NFT DeFi projects, um, invest in those, and yeah, just try not to move around too much um, and just wait. And like because it it seems like a sure thing that the NFT space is going to keep growing in value. Um, it's just uh, like, if you look at the social growth, um, so yeah, it's just about, I think, riding that wave, um, and try not to be too, um, like overly principled. I made some mistakes. Like I sold most of my crypto punks, um, over summer when Larva lab started like sending out DMCAs to other projects, um, that like really upset me that they weren't like being decentralized and that they were like suing people for making punk derivatives. Um, and in hindsight, that was stupid of me. Um, like it was, I got overly emotional and at the end of the day, like most people like athletes and stuff that are picking up a crypto punk, like they're not really following that. Um, they just hear like, Oh, crypto punks are one of the early profile pictures. They're worth a lot. It's a cool flex. Um, and yeah, I've made that mistake a couple times now, just like being overly, overly analyzing something. Um, to the point that I end up convincing myself I should sell um, when really it's there's there's no absolutes right and it's it's good to just kind of take the probabilities and um, diversify a bit and yeah hold on to your bags mm, makes sense makes sense uh, that makes sense uh, I have I have one more question uh, like I just want to hear from you this is about like just generative art right like so you've been mm-hmm. a vocal advocate of autoglyphs for the really long yeah. time right but like fidenza just took over so what's what's that uh, like you know why do you like autoglyphs more and like you know why do you think fidenza took over or, like what's that debate about yeah that's um like i did not see that coming and like i remember when like fidenza mint happened and then they got up to like five or ten ETH, and i was still like no way i'm paying that much for like uh whatever right and then it just it keeps going up um again i would say that's a situation where it's like like i think 
like I used to think like punks and autoglyphs, they would always be like the most expensive collection. And clearly that hasn't been the case. And I, I don't think that'll be the case. I think more collections will keep on um, leapfrogging them over time. But I still think that they have like the most staying power um, just because they are very early. Um, the, the thing I liked about autoglyphs um, is that they just, they strike me as being very iconic um, and being like, quintessentially early generative art so you look at it and it's like it almost looks like something like a, an alien's cave painting right like um it's just like very like if you had one in your house like people would go like whoa what's that right like um it doesn't really look like art but then it's like you follow up with like well it was like one of the first generative art projects on ethereum and it, it's just very um that how that's exactly how it strikes me and i think that's pretty cool that it was all on chain um, and they were all given away for free. Um, so, yeah, I've just always loved autoglyphs. I only have one now, but um, I, I don't see myself selling it. And uh, they're just, they're they're really cool. It, but you, the thing with generative art is that, I guess, over the last year, profile pictures have just, just taken off so much. Um, and I don't think many people saw that coming. I certainly didn't. Uh, like we used to, everyone used to talk about NFTs as basically being like art, right? And like the Mona Lisa and stuff. Um, and increasingly NFTs seem to be like luxury brands, um, like Gucci and Louis Vuitton or like a Lamborghini. And it's more about like this social flex um, and like rappers getting into it and stuff. And I guess, you know, we shouldn't really be surprised by that because like the the market for luxury brands is just so much bigger than classic art. Uh, but on the other hand, it's like there's a lot more staying power, I think, to the early generative art just because there there is a historical aspect um, and there's a better chance that people are still going to care about it 10 years from now. Uh, but, yeah, I guess the upside isn't isn't quite as high because you can't, you know, you, you could use an autoglyph as a profile picture, but it's it's probably, yeah, it's probably not going to get you a hot date or anything um, like a board ape. Yeah. <laughs> have have your NFTs gotten you any kind of dates, Alex? Uh, no, no. And like I, everyone, like I know I shouldn't like when I go on dates, I shouldn't say like I'm in NFTs, but I normally do end up saying it, um, just because like it's it's a pain to have to come up with other stories about how I'm in finance or something. Um, yeah, definitely some some dates like uh, i'll get the whole spiel about how i'm destroying the planet <laughs> definitely don't usually end up having a second date in those situations <laughs> yeah, yeah i have a story like i told someone like you know i'm into nfts and they just stopped talking to me after that like no yeah yeah like i'm like okay but like we had good thing going on never mind <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I, I think the trick is to like so like i'll say i'm in nfts but then i like say like yeah but like and the nft market and nft people are kind of crazy just to like so that way it's like don't worry i'm not going to sit here and try and indoctrinate you about how you need to put all your money into nfts um like of course i don't really feel that way i think nft people are pretty awesome but i I think there's just a stigma out there that like everyone knows that one crypto bro guy that all he wants to talk about is how everyone needs to buy Bitcoin. And it's like, you know, it's, it's a bit tiring. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so, uh, so what is your take on uh, Lava Labs selling the ideas of Nibits and CryptoPunks to like, you know, Basie? All yeah, I think. Like Larva Labs, like those guys used to be like my heroes, man. <laughs> and then it's like, I don't know. It's like they just do it. Like over the last six months, they've done everything they can to like just get people to dislike them. Um, I, I don't think it's it's really a big deal. Um, and like even I, I guess I've been wrong about this. Like a year ago, I used to say like I didn't think like the whole like how board apes own their own IP. I didn't think it really mattered. Um, and I don't see like teams adding stuff to their ecosystem being like a big bullish case for an investment. But I was, I've been pretty wrong about that. Um, I think what kind of ends up happening is that it feeds into itself and it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So like if, if a team like announces like, oh, we're building this or we're expanding the ecosystem, that gets holders more excited um, and then holders end up buying more and telling more people and then the price goes up. 
and then there's like the team has more money to spend on things and it just kind of becomes like this self-fulfilling prophecy uh but yeah to me like punks their their value is kind of with their like how they were like the first 10,000 profile picture um on ethereum and like that can't really go away um and now at this point like especially the rare punks like even though the punk floor is below the board eight floor um uh, like the alien punks like nothing comes even close to that right like those are just like the absolute goat of uh profile pictures and who knows if that'll be the case forever but um it's still pretty epic so yeah i don't i don't see it as being a big deal um and like my advice to people would be like, don't worry too much about what the creators are doing. Uh, but it's not a bad thing. I think it's pretty cool how, you know, Yugo Labs bought it and like gave the IP back to punk holders. Personally, I'm one of the people that like, I don't really see the IP as like, I, I don't know if like people are going to really make that much money off like merchandise and stuff, especially if you have like 10,000 different merchandise brands for each punk. Um but it can't hurt. And um, it's like, I've been pretty wrong about that so far. So there's a, you know, there's a chance I, I continue being wrong about it. Um, I, I think it just mostly comes down to like the permissionless aspect of NFTs. It's like, you know, regardless of who owns the IP, if you have an alien punk, you own that alien punk and no one can take that from you. Um, and people can make all the copies they want. And it's like, people will still want the original. Although the V1 punk stuff like that, pfft, I didn't see that coming either. So yeah, who knows? Um, who knows? <laughs> yeah, but but like uh, I think no, did people see this coming? Right? Like I mean, like you said, right? Like just uh, punks get the historical value just because of existing, right? Like so, why would you want to sell? Is it like just to cash out or like what's the point? Yeah, I, I I mean, I would recommend to people that they don't sell. Like, I made the mistake of selling. Um, and I did that because I just didn't like what the Larva Labs team was doing with, like, DMCA and other, other collections. I thought that kind of went against the space. Um, but, yeah, that was that was a bad decision. Don't, don't make a point with your bags because um, it might come back to bite you. And um, I never saw it like a year ago when it was like people thought like, oh, uh, I was saying like, oh, board Apes will never be worth more than me bits. And it's like now they're worth more than punks and they own the punk IP. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a crazy timeline. It just keeps getting crazier. Very cool. Very cool. So very cool. So tell me something like, you know, uh, what kind of like new uh things which you are observing in the uh, ecosystem and like you know you find it interesting which are happening right now yeah so i guess like the thing one thing i touched on is just like i'd say the biggest narrative shift is like away from um like classic art nfts as classic art and more of them as like being luxury goods um and like basically a way for people to flex um and yeah, I, st I still think there's a lot of uncertainty and like I, I'm probably like a bit of a boomer at this point. Like I'm just like, oh, I don't know if like the meta, like virtual worlds will ever take off or, or that kind of stuff or, or gaming NFTs um, and like utility and all this. But it, it all seems to be working really well. Um, and I think that like a lot of projects, especially like with this ApeCoin drop, we could see like a real uh, tokenomics boom. Um, in the NFT space, and that's kind of similar to what we saw in DeFi, like once certain DeFi projects figured out like the Ponzi nomics, um, you know, it, it might not have worked forever, like, but there was this massive boom. Um, and it's like one project goes up and that money feeds into the next project and then that goes up and it feeds into the next project and you kind of get like this bubble effect. Um, and I could see more and more projects experimenting with tokenomics having like their own native coins. Um, so like kind of like how Kongs have banana and now like board apes have ape um, and basically like cool cats and milk. Um, and then you, you're staking and you're getting these rewards. And yeah, you know, it, it strikes me as like kind of like a Ponzi, um, not in a bad way. It's just like, I don't know if you can add sustainable value long-term, 
but on the other hand, you know, if, if you can get into the top 10, um, that's pretty huge. And it's like, you do end up with some staying power. Um, and then if you use those, if the team uses those proceeds to build more stuff, and if they do a good job with it, like the mutant drop was that, I think that was amazing. Um, like how the basically Yuga Labs managed to expand the Board 8 brand because um, 10,000 items just isn't that much. Um, and it's like, if you go, like, if there were only like 10,000 Lambos in the world, um, like people wouldn't, like the, the brand wouldn't be as powerful or like only 10,000 Louis Vuitton bags, right? Um, so you do want to expand, I think, the number of your collection without diluting the original holders um, so they don't get upset and like that they're, you know, they're, the price is going down. Um, and what Yuga Labs did by ha- kind of expanding the Board 8 brand because mutants look similar, uh, but then there's still like board apes are still like the top of the tier. Um, that was pretty genius. And I think they executed on that really well. And it was just like a really fun way to do it. Uh, so yeah, I could see more stuff like that. Um, teams trying to expand the collections in new ways um, without diluting the original, the original NFT. And then also just adding in meme coins and tokenomics, Ponzi-nomics, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, I'm really hoping like liquidity kind of feeds and becomes a big piece of that as well. Um, and just DeFi in general, um, like one reason that liquidity is important is just for other DeFi use cases. Like if you want to have lending markets, um, it's really important that there's liquidity uh, so that if like someone, if someone goes over their maximum loan amount, um, they can get uh, liquidated. And like someone can come along, like it's kind of like if you borrow die using Ethereum, someone can liquidate you um, if the price goes too low. But in order to liquidate something, you need um, liquid markets below that. Um, so like right now, NFTX still only works for floors, but like we do have some ideas on how we could probably hopefully expand that in the future. Um, and if, yeah, if NFTs start getting used in lending markets and DeFi, um, and then there's like real yields that you can be earning from them it it all just feeds into it i think um and yeah it's still a lot to come like it's it's still very early in that sense and i'm I'm particularly excited about the DeFi use cases okay talking about DeFi use cases i have one more follow-up question not it's not follow up Mm -hmm. just a new question um like you know people talk a lot about like oh nft collateralized loans nft why hasn't it taken like you know gone up like you know because we've been having this discussion we've been bullish yeah. on uh like you know yeah you can back your nfts and like take loan but it's not happening as much as we would like or mm-hmm. i don't know if it's happening at all so w- what's your uh, what do you think about that yeah um i i should say like i i have talked to some projects and like i think if you look at the metrics from some of the projects like they're definitely going up quickly um like and I think as the, the rest of the space goes up, but I agree that in general, um, like a year and a half ago, like it was basically just DeFi people that were buying like crypto punks. And it was a lot about the DeFi use cases and it's, it's kind of moved away from that. Um, and I think it's just kind of the type of people and like not, not in a negative way, but it's a lot more newcomers that have gotten into NFTs um, and they're interested in the social aspects. A lot of people are just super rich. Um, like if you have, you know, a million dollars to drop on a profile picture, then you might not care that much about like, if you can, you know, get a loan and earn 5%, like farming those, um, your loan in some stable coin farm. Um, and you don't want to risk losing your NFT. I also just don't know if there's that much reason to want to borrow an NFT. And like, that's still something that's yet to be seen. Um, like if you lease a Ferrari, uh, and you're driving down the street, no one knows that it's leased. Um, but like, and it's kind of the same with an NFT, but like people can check, right? Like um, you could you could go and click on, so and like on the blockchain, it's all transparent. And you could see like, oh, this guy's like literally paying money to borrow this profile picture. Um, and it, who knows, like maybe that, like maybe in the future, if like dating apps, like you can, are integrated with NFTs, um, people won't check and like there will be like a real demand to just like borrow a, an alien, like a crypto punk alien for a week and get like a bunch of matches. Uh, I, I really, I don't know. And it's like, it's interesting seeing that evolve, but 
Yeah, my hope is that it's still all coming. Um, that just like with the rest of crypto, like with the ICO boom, um, you get people that show up and then a lot of people leave. But the people that stick around, they do eventually get like interested in other integrations um, and how it can work with the rest of the Web3 ecosystem. So, yeah, I, I would say we're still early. Uh, but that it, there definitely does seem to be a trend of it being more of a social thing and more of like a flex thing, like um, like Eminem buying a board ape, but like he's probably not going to care about like his rewards if he can lend it, you know? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, okay. So uh, what, what, are, what, what are your takes on like, you know, just derivatives as a market right like derivatives of whatever nfts i'm not talking about like oh generative derivatives but like you know just uh or maybe i'll call it fan art if that mm -hmm. is a yeah. better word i think i think it's it's really cool um and like i think it really entrenches the collection so as more and more people like make fan art of board apes um and like make one of one fan art and either even derivative collection so like i i joined in for the mint uh, a few weeks ago for like ethereal apes because i just thought they looked really sweet uh and it's i think it it just makes the brand of the actual apes um, that much stronger um which is why i don't like it when teams like do the whole dmca thing and, and attack derivatives um because it kind of goes against the space and i think it, it actually kind of it hurts um the original collection because yeah i mean if you see people like or you, and you can even think of like graffiti right like if you're walking through the city and like you see like some mural someone's graffitied like a board eight to me that just makes the original worth more um and it entrenches the brand um and yeah it's it's pretty cool um i think i don't know if derivatives will ever like i don't know how great of an investment they are um because it's just so unlikely that they're going to become worth more or even close to as much as the original. But I think they can be a really good indicator for like how well the original is doing. If there's like, you know, 10,000 derivative projects, that probably means that the original has, has really strong blue chip status. Yeah. I, I, sorry. What, what project uh, did you say you just joined? Uh, I, I couldn't. Oh, it's, it's called ethereal apes. Um, they're they're pretty sweet. Uh, I don't even know if I can like post. I never do faces. Right? Okay, I saw it on your. Oh. Uh, yeah, the, 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 like, the art is really cool. Um, and like they have these different skins, like with all these Easter eggs in it. Um, uh, so like I got one. And it's like the skin is like all these different like crypto influencers. Um, like in the background, it, the art was just done really well. And um, I think like when you see that that happening then it it makes the board apes like that much more of like it adds lore and like to to how awesome they are when you you see all these other derivatives coming it's kind of like when people remix a song right like if you hear like a bunch of different remixes of like a jay-z song um even if the remixes are better to listen to like that just makes the original jay-z music that much more of a classic so it's yeah similar idea yep cool what, what are your thoughts on music nfts Huh. Yeah, I think I think there's like I've always thought that like music NFTs would just be so awesome because uh, like I remember back to like when I was younger as like a teenager, just like loving going through my iPod and like having all my albums and my songs. Also, and you stuff. have beats, right? Like you spend quite a bomb on like buying Euler beats, beats as well. Yeah, yeah, I have I have one of the the Euler Beat originals. I, I I forget how many there are. It's either like twenty two or twenty seven or something. Um, I got in like a, I got in at like twenty ETH, and then the the floor went up to like four hundred ETH. And of course, I didn't sell. So that's one of the ones I actually did hold, and now it's like way back down. Um, and I think that's almost an example. On one hand, like yeah, definitely profile pictures have done better than like generative art and generative music my new death beef has done really well uh, but it's also like there's only like 20 something of the originals so you just don't end up with a very big community um and like when there's more if there had been like maybe 200 like or like 500 like autoglyphs then there's a better chance of there being more influencers that are basically shilling their bags 
um, and it, it strengthens it. So it's funny how like supply, like low supply is a good thing, um, but like higher supply can be a, a good thing too because it, it gets more exposure that way. But yeah, the generative Euler beats, I hope they become worth a lot again one day. Um, but just music in general, like music NFTs in general, um, I think there's a lot of potential for that. Um, if people can collect music, it's just a question of how to do it. Um, like if I, if there was a way for me to own like NFT versions of like classic hip hop albums, um, that would just be super cool. I would love that so much. It's to me, it's not really the same if it's done retroactively. So like if, a, if an artist comes out and like makes an NFT of an album now that like was actually released 20 years ago, it's not really as cool. Um, so like we will probably have to wait like five to 10 years before we start seeing like classic music NFTs become a thing. Uh, but people do feel have different opinions on that. Like, you know, retroactive is, yeah, it's like probably a whole discussion in itself, but yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential for them. Like, um, spotty Wi-Fi is a pretty, pretty dope rapper. Um, definitely worth checking out. He's on Spotify. I think he did like, uh, his album drop is like an NFT um over summer and like he's got like some tracks about like board apes and punks and stuff they're pretty funny to listen to yeah i'm just i'm just putting spotty on our <laughs> uh of all the shouts uh, shout outs yeah and spotty just got a shout out from snoop dogg so that was oh crazy <laughs> that's dope good for him yeah, yeah, yeah. I, i've just uh like you know pinned it so like you know you can go and check it out okay dope <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah. know how to do that, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll send you the link, I guess. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for, like, you know, like, answering all these questions. I'll just see if, like, you know, audience have any kind of questions. Uh, and then we'll take them or else, like, you know, we'll just end the space. Uh, guys, if you yeah, have for sure. questions, uh, like, you know, please request caps if you want to come up. Like, you know, want to say a few words, uh, that would be pretty cool. Like, even you, Amit. All right. <laughs> okay. I don't think so. Cool. But, like, guys, um, thank you for, what do you say, joining. And, uh, mm -hmm. okay, two people have requested. Just want to... Cool, cool. Yeah, for sure. All good. Hi, Prabhjot. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yep, yep. Hey. Yo, what's up? Uh, I just want to shout out um, Goss. Um, I'm actually, I was a developer at Flower Pack, so thanks for buying the Archangel. Still really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Yeah. yeah my, my pleasure, bro. And I, I know, I, I think I have a, a DM from you that I still got to read on one of my alt accounts. Nah, bro, it's all good. Um, my my question to you right now specifically is if a project, let's say a project like fundraises, like I say fundraise as if that's what they were doing in minting, like 500 ETH for like, let's say the community bank, how much would you suggest for them to put an NFTX? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that's probably like up to the community. And, and if like you're already like letting those proceeds get managed by the community, like that's definitely like the first step. Um, and that's awesome. Um, and then, yeah, it, it kind of depends on the project and like where the floor is at um, and how much liquidity people want. But it's it's pretty cool if you can get a vault going with like at least 50 items in it. Because at that point, there's a better chance that people can come and they can swap their item for the item in there. Um, and they can provide liquidity and inventory. And it kind of gets it to that base level where it's likely to get activity. Um, so yeah, it's probably less of a question of like how much capital or like how much percent of your treasury to put in, um, and just putting like that kind of minimum threshold amount so that the, the vault can get some activity. Um, and then if, you know, if people like it and if it's getting used, um, then you can always add more, but, uh, yeah, it'd be great to have flower patch on there. I, I think you guys are like, are you more based on polygon these days or, or am I, am I tripping? Oh yeah, no, no. Flower patch is like all polygon. Um, I'm actually yeah. like leaving them at the end of this month to like work on my own project. Oh. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and what I really wanted to do is like actually like put my money where my mouth is, right? And like actually like put in funds for like liquidity, like actually have a treasury bank for tokens and that kind of stuff. So I've been kind of researching like what is the correct way of like 
making sure people are incentive aligned to like be part of the like actually give the money back right like if you're gonna have like that much money like do something with the money right like or with the tokens too like fundraise or give to the community um that's what i've been doing for the past like two weeks yeah well that's awesome dude um and i'm definitely happy to like answer questions about that kind of stuff on on uh on twitter i don't like i don't have any, any perfect answers to it but i think as long as you're trying to like give back to the community and empower the people um, who have kind of spent money on it. And that's like, it's a great first step. Uh, and I, I, I imagine like over time, we'll see more stuff where like creators even like vest some of the NFTs for themselves. Um, so that way it's like, you're very incentive aligned. So like um, you, you're less likely to like go and you know, shit post or like create a bad reputation for the project. Uh, but that stuff isn't also totally necessary. Um, like as long as you're making an effort to kind of empower the community, it's it's tough these days because DAO tooling just isn't super accessible. Like it's still kind of rough um, running a DAO and like scaling it, uh, but it can definitely be done. And yeah, I'm happy to you know kind of share share tips on that um, if you ever want to talk. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear as much advice because like I'm even like going as far as to reserve like 2000 tokens out of 10K just to say that I can like give tokens to people who continue to work on the project post mint. Because like what, what I think of the problem with the NFT community is that we put so many incentives before the mint. That there's so much hype and whatever that once it's mint, like mm-hmm. that's it. Like that was the project and like you're done, yeah. like you're just holding on to bags. And I really want people to be incentive aligned post mint more so than they are pre mint. Um and that that'll be my experiment. I <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's so similar to the ICOs, right? Because ICOs were very much like that, or like ICOs were a lot like that too. Um, like the project would launch, and then the creators would just get all this money into their bank account, and then a lot of the time it just kind of ended there. <laughs> um, and whereas nowadays, like with DeFi launches, like all the money goes into a DAO, and like if the launch does well, then the community has a lot of funds, and there's usually like reserve tokens, like NFTX. I think our DAO holds. Um, like 25% or more of the NFTX tokens. Um, and it's like, it's good to have reserves, right? So that like in the future, you can always use that to, to pay people for bounties and extensions to the project um, without having to mint more. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, because like we don't want it to be dilutive, but at the same time, you want to have incentives post like mint or whatever. Um, and I'm, I'm even thinking about like increasing the number of like 2000 reserve tokens to like something like 3K or something. Um, yeah. And as well, as, yeah, because like even like secondary market sales, like all fees go to the bank. But like I'm starting to think that even mint should like 90% of it should just go to the bank. Like I don't really care about the money, but like I feel like the project is more important. But like, I don't know. I, I definitely need a yeah. lot more advice and research in this thing before I do anything. So that's what I've been doing. So I appreciate no, your I advice. Think that's, yeah, I think that's really admirable, dude. Um, like trying to give back to the community as much as you can. Just kind of put your money where your mouth is. Uh, and I, yeah, 100%. I'll, I'll, um, I'll follow up. I, I fall behind on my alt account sometimes, but I'll, I'll follow up and, uh, and respond. And, and we can kind of hash the rest of it out if you have other questions. Yeah, for sure. And if you have any advice as well, D, um, I'd love to hear it as well. Um, literally anybody, if anyone has any advice, just hit me up, please. I'm, I'm just trying to make like something like better than what we have right now. Cause like what we have right now is pretty shit. Like yeah. stats aren't even yeah. on chain, man. They're not even random. Like I'm legit going to yeah. use chain link to like get random yeah. stats. Like it's so, like so scuffed. Hey, but, it, but it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Prabhu, just uh, listening to that uh, just makes me feel happy. Uh, so thank you for sharing. And I think it's a good idea, right? Like you just uh, keep 30% of, you know, whatever your entire project and like, you know, distribute it over time, right? Like, my, like why do we need to sell uh, like the entire inventory at the first mm-hmm. loop, right? If you want to. And uh, like if the project is doing well, so whatever you have kept, like the 30%, that is also extremely valuable, right? Like so even people who are contributing, like just like DeFi tokens, right? Like there is a treasury uh, just kept for the team, right? Like so, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's a good one, good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, exactly that, right? Like, I, I want the community to be incentive in line, and eventually, like, I don't want the community to just be the community. Like, they should be developing the project as well. And as like those guys get lifted up, hopefully not just by, by me, but other people working on the project, like it should make ev- like the ecosystem and like everything scale faster and better, and just make more people incentive in line to continue working on it post mint, and not treat it like a dump. And and yeah, not to like uh, make this like an NFTX shell, but like 
it, I think it would be so cool if projects started keeping some reserves. Um, and then what you could do is like, if you had 3000 NFTs, you could put all those into a vault, especially if they're floors, right? Um, and then you could just hang on to the vault tokens. So then you basically, you still have all those assets and you, but it, anyone can go and they can swap if they want. Um, so there's always like thousands you can swap from. And I think that kind of adds utility to the collection in its own way. Um, I, I would love to see you do that. Like, I don't think we've seen any team yet do that much. Um, and part of the reason is the gas costs. And like, we're looking into ways to like seed vaults better. But uh, yeah, be super stoked to talk about this more. Wait, no, that's so. That's actually like genius. Like, that's like the the best thing I could do is to keep the, the thing liquid as well as also hold onto that many tokens. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm for sure going to do that now. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. That's sweet. No, it's so genius. Like, why don't we do this anyway? Like, why don't we have like funds yeah. go to like? like yeah, it's, I have many problems with it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for your question, Prashant. Uh, you have a question. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hello, Dheeraj. Hello, Goss. Uh, I have a very simple basic question that regarding DeFi. That uh, for, a, for a newbie, how much fund required to enter in DeFi? What is the minimum fund? Should we start? Oh, how much money to put in? Yeah. Or like you mean in launching a project or as an investor? No, no project. Project I will launch later, but I want to enter into DeFi. What is the minimum amount Just, should we should invest? I mean, it, it really depends on how much money you have to spend. Um, I think like if you're just trying to look to getting some exposure, um, like DPI, uh, the DeFi Pulse Index, like that's, it's probably a good place. It hasn't done so well over the last year because DeFi has had it kind of rough. Yeah. Um, but like, a, yeah, like an index token like that. Um, so yeah, D DPI, um, it's a good way to get exposure to like a number of different projects. Um, it's, it's a tough call. Like in 2020, um, I remember I started saying like I was only going to put 20% of my crypto into DeFi alts and by like the end of the year it was like 80% um, because it just kept going up and like it was just DeFi that was going up but then last year um, DeFi did really poorly and it was just ETH that was going up. Yep. So yeah, I think I think like ETH is a safer investment but it's good to have a DeFi allocation um, just to, because eventually like it cycles, right? And things and DeFi will eventually pump. Um, and so it's, it's good to maybe put like 20% into something like the DPI. Um, yeah, just, just for when that time comes because yeah. DeFi, when DeFi pumps, it does pump harder than ETH. Um, just cause mm. the people tend to be, uh, um, a little bit more passionate and there's a lot of weaker hands with ETH cause you have a lot of people's like parents that are buying it and stuff and they're like, Oh, 50% gains time to get out. <laughs> I have a, I have a follow up question. Like, do you want to do DeFi stuff like liquidity mining and pool, or like you just want exposure to DeFi for price appreciation? I don't know anything about DeFi, but I have heard a lot of things that <laughs> DeFi. So I want to catch up, but I don't know how to enter in this field. I so, see, firstly, what I would recommend you to do is go and watch uh, these uh, this uh, YouTube channel called Finematics. Okay. Uh, they talk, I'm just going to like, you know, pin it, um, up. They talk a lot about DeFi and, uh, like, you know, all the projects. So you can check out like, you know, what, what is Uniswap, you, what is Aave, what is Chainlink and like, you know, how these projects come into the entire ecosystem. Don't rush into investing. You don't have to go and invest. Like if you learn about these technologies and if you can form thesis, like, oh, this particular uh, protocol is probably required in everything we do on uh, like you know crypto or like you know this is a good platform to borrow and lend money right like so you can form thesis right like and like Goss said like if you just want exposure there are decent uh, index funds but what has happened like any other coin these funds are not outperforming ETH or even BTC for that matter so like it depends, right? Like how, like maybe 10, 20 percent of your portfolio, if you want to risk it, uh, you can. And but like what you can do is like if if you don't, if you if it's not just about price exposure, uh, then like you know if you have some ETH, even if it's like a hundred dollar or something, you can lend it out and like you know earn interest on it. Uh, you can use Aave or like you know you can use time time swap 
labs where amit is like you know one of the speaker is building a uh, defi protocol so like you know these are the things you can start with uh, i would recommend like you know you gone or phantom so you are not like you know screwed with fees you can use any centralized exchange uh, to transfer to like a polygon or a phantom or like even binance smart chain for that matter and like you know just try it out but like i would highly recommend you go through finematics and learn what is defi and like you know why it is important we have done couple of spaces on defi as well uh, if you speak hindi uh, just uh, dm ashutosh uh, ashu here and like he'll send you the link uh, for that um, space as well so like you know we've gone over it in brief as well and if you want more deeper understanding this finematics guys are uh, super cool sure i will go to the guy from finematics if i will get some hurdles i will contact you <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right mm-hmm. no hey man can i go next yeah yeah go hey alex man how are you Hey dude, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> good, good man. Long time. I think I was just yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I was just actually. Yeah, I was just actually. You know, like couple of days back, just going through my old NFT stuff, and I actually stumbled upon like you know sending the Avastars into that uh, you know your uh, NFTX launch vault, right? I think when you yeah. <clears throat> launched NFTX, we had all these uh, NFTs to be sent in exchange for mm-hmm. tokens. Yeah, yeah, I was just reminiscing like that feels like fucking ten years ago, but it's like I think it was like late. I know, it's twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> oh crazy. man, that felt like fucking ages ago. I was just thinking. I think, I think right before that, I think you did a sweep of all the auto glyphs, right? I think it was in November twenty twenty. Yeah. Before you yeah, <laughs> launched yeah. the world. Yeah, I think it's great to see. I think kept more of those, but um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the NFTX DAO still has like six or seven, and we have a lot of avastars still. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah, yeah I think and I think it's great. It's like great to see where uh, you know. I think I hadn't like checked it out for like six months, like from June till December. And I think I think around that flow down when it came out, I came back to the platform. Like it's completely different. Everything looks so crisp oh, and yeah, clean with all the crazy. walls. Like it's completely different. I was like, okay, I need to like. You know, learn the whole thing from the beginning, but yeah, it was like really nice to see the progress that you guys have made with this whole thing. Well, thank Great you, I, I appreciate that, and yeah, yeah I hope right. there's still a lot more to come. Yeah, and I still remember, like, I think you remember, like, in Feb when the hash mask thing came out, and you guys launched the mask pool, and I was yeah. just spending spending time arving that and the open sea floor. Those like such great times, yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah, that was, like, that was a big it, boom for us. One of the hash mask launch, like that uh, yeah. was huge. Yeah, yeah, good time. time. Good times, yeah. You know, <laughs> nice, you know, nice. You know what I really think, Tom? Yeah, thanks. Is like I think it's a very pivotal project when it comes to generative art. I guess, right? Like I do. I think like they made the entire thing so well. They used like layers and masks and all. I don't know, like uh, maybe Crypto Punks was done like that, but I think like Hashmark just changed the game, right? Like which I, I don't know what happened. I don't know why it got like. Top- yeah, I think yeah. it. I, I think Hashmark should have been the board apes. It just as I guess the community dropped the ball and board apes just took it over from there. I think like everything that I think board apes start. I think uh, Hashmark had. I think the early community was just. Absolutely crazy! I think we have Saurabh on the stage. No, he's not. He was also pretty deep into hash marks. But yeah, that was a pretty interesting time. I think there was no other NFT project at the time, right? There was just, I think, hash mask and then your uh, punks and autoglyphs. It's a pretty interesting time just before. Yeah, all of this. hash mask blew up a lot. Uh, yeah, too bad they didn't. They didn't stay up. I think it's. I think the. I think the funny thing is, hash mask was probably the one project where the. The DeFi community went all in, and then all of them got burned. That they all, you know, started ignoring the NFT market, and this entire new wave of, you know, folks entered into the NFT. And this is very interesting. Like I think all the DeFi folks still hold all the hash marks, and I keep saying every couple of months, when is hash marks gonna pump? All the other shit is pumping. <laughs> when is this gonna pump? <laughs> Pretty interesting. Yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> Great time. Nice to catch up, man. Great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Ditto. Yeah. Talk to you later. Yeah.
Awesome. We'll take one last question from uh, Alert, uh, Alert Arumugam, and then like you know we can close it. Yeah, I'd probably get going after that, but yeah, it sounds good. Go for it. Uh, hey guys, uh, so thanks, uh, thanks for letting me have the last question. So as you see, my DP, uh, it's uh, it's actually a, a project called Solana Board uh, Board, uh, uh, like. Equivalent of Ethereum, it is Solana's uh, BAYC. I uh, participated in the project and uh, actually it uh, never got verified and never got listed in any of the marketplaces. And fortunately, after uh, changing the name of the project and all, it uh, just got listed in uh, in Magic Eden and stuff uh, for Solana. But uh, the BAYC appears to have uh, uh, returned to Magic Eden and now it's out of the marketplaces. And uh, the Discord group is closed. The Twitter handle is closed now. We are not able to reach anyone. So first question is, uh, what to do now? Uh, I think this is right. So uh, how to use this NFT, or is it just that uh, the money is gone? Poof. And uh, the second question is, uh, I also have uh, a couple of other NFTs in uh, in Solana, wherein the floor price has just uh, gone south uh, just after listing. Uh, so how do you? Take care of this, the liquid NFTs, wherein you have just uh, very, very, very expensive JPEGs in your collections. Yeah, I do. Like, do you mean from um, a taxes per- perspective? Uh, no, to make sense of at least recover something out of this and uh, do something with it. I was just trying to look into Paribas, drops and all. Can we use it as collateral, get something out of it and make some money out of that? How to make good the loss or any strategies that you guys follow? Yeah, I think I don't think there's any. I I don't know. Um, I don't think you could really do anything except maybe seek therapy. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, <laughs> I'm joking. But um, yeah, I think that's just part of the game. Like I think, I think more and more as NFTs blow up, um, we're gonna see like the chances are like the majority of them will basically go to zero over time, um, or close to it. Um, so you kind of just got to take the losses on the chin and, um, you know, keep hoping for the winners. But uh, I mean, sometimes it can come back. Like um, it, it depends on the community. I think like uh, Uwu Crew, um, which is like an NFT uh, on Ethereum, like it was previously a Waifu community um, and it kind of, it, it fell and like the, the prices crashed and there was some like pretty negative energy. Um, and then the certain community members, like you started up new discords and kind of started fresh. Um, and so like that, it's definitely possible. And that's, what's cool about NFTs is that you, that's always an option, um, for other people to like, you know, pick up where it left off. Uh, but yeah, in most cases, I think that there's really nothing you can do. Um, yeah, which is just unfortunate. Maybe, maybe in the future there will be more. And that's, you know, that's one reason I think liquidity is really important. Um, so that there's always some sort of like base level for prices and swapping and like people can still kind of stick around. Yeah. So Alex's first comment was like, you know, why I follow him. Any, <laughs> so, uh, any, so bro, like, like he mentioned, like, you know, mostly like 99% of it, it's rug, like, you know, it's gone. So like, you know, we live with it. And like, I'll just tell you, I'll give you a small example. Like I have, I've bought like 200 NFTs, but like, I think only 25%, 25 of them are of any value, right? Like, so rest of them, I'm like, just given up. So like, it, it's part and parcel, right? So that's why you invest whatever you can afford to lose. Yeah, kind of like lottery tickets, <laughs> yeah. um, except except they look pretty, you use them as your profile picture. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so uh, guys, thank you for coming. Uh, Prashant, uh, Alert, Amit, thank you for asking your questions. I just want to uh, shout out to Caps as well for sticking around for the longest time, but still not coming up on stage. No issues. Yeah, he, he DM'd me a little bit ago and he said he had to <laughs> pop out for a minute. So I, I don't know if he's still listening, but I see him there. <laughs> thank you, Rohit. Thank you, Om. Uh, Piyush, NFT, Tazi, Prabjot, Hemant, Ori, Pranay, Yash for uh, sticking around. Uh, thank you for coming and doing this, Alex. Uh, really appreciate and like you know, thank you for always uh, like you know, <laughs> and like just supporting uh, me whenever 
uh, you could uh, like I, i still miss your posts like i have i have no issues with your shit posting yeah. <laughs> honestly think it helps the nftx but like you think otherwise but that, that that's yeah what... i know right so <laughs> yeah it's a trade off but no my pleasure dude thanks for having me and yep. um and nice guys talking to the rest of you guys and uh, yep. like amit and prabjot and I'll, i'll talk to you more online for sure yeah if <laughs> take care bro if you like this page yeah. uh, go for one second if you like this page go follow us uh, follow nftx uh, follow floor dow as well follow caps mm-hmm. uh, and uh, if you learn something like you know just retweet and tag me uh tag alex let us know how did you like did you enjoy the space did you learn something uh did we miss out on something did i say something wrong uh feel free to come <laughs> and uh, thank you again goss for doing this uh, we really appreciate let's uh, do this once more maybe like sometime man uh, for sure and yeah love- <laughs> yeah oh. it'd, be, it'd be cool to do another one and look back at how things have changed awesome 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 all right so i'm just ending the space and thank you ashutosh for helping me set this up uh see ya <laughs>